Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Monday means it's Modern Monday here in Instant Deck Tech land, and we have a super interesting port to look at today. So this is Blue White Monument, which you've probably heard of before. It's kind of one of the best decks in standard right now, but this is Blue White Monument for Modern. Recently took Giant Killer 4 to an undefeated finish in a competitive Modern League on Magic Online, so congrats to Giant Killer on their finish with the deck. Quick reminder before we break down Modern Blue White Monument, we're doing a giveaway right now worldwide for a box of Hour of Devastation, so so make sure to follow the link in the description and check that out if you're interested. Uh, anyway, let's talk Modern Blue White Monument. So, of course, the namesake card, Oketra's Monument, was kind of a sleeper from Amaket. Didn't really catch on right away. And then people realized that the ability to play your stuff really cheaply and make a token while you're doing it is actually a super powerful effect. So you can see this list. If you're familiar with the standard version of Blue White Monument that basically tries to go super wide and then eventually wins with a big finisher. In standard, it's Westville Abbey, but something that's a payoff for going super wide. This deck is basically doing the same thing, except it gets a lot of upgrades as far as creatures are concerned because we have the whole modern card pool instead of just the cards legal and standard. So as far as generating value with Oketra's Monument, two of the big ones are Squadron Hawk and Wall of Omen. So the sweet thing about these cards is not only do they come down for just one mana if we have a monument out, but they get us more cards so we can cast more cards for cheap with monument and make even more tokens. So Squadron Hawk in specific is amazing. One mana, you get a 1-1 flyer. Eh, not super exciting, but it lets us pull all the Squadron Hawks out of our deck. So all together for four mana, we end up with four 1-1 flyers and with a Ketra's monument out, four 1-1 ground tokens as well, which is a ton of value. It's like super lingering souls or something, super special spectral procession when we have that combo going. Wall of Omens, good blocker in the early game, doesn't cost us a card because we just directly draw a card when it enters the battlefield. Pretty good deal for just one mana. Then we also have some disruptive creatures. Spell Queller, kind of a trick from the standard deck. You see that played in standard as well. Really insane for just two mana with Monument, but it hits a lot of stuff. If you think about the heavily played things in the modern format, apart from Tron, various Eldrazi base decks, most of the threats in the format come in under four converted mana costs, which means Spellqueller just gets rid of anything. Judge's Familiar gives us a little disruption from turn one, makes people play off curve, even though it looks weird because it's kind of a force spike that's sitting on the battlefield, it actually does really impact the game. If your opponent wants to scape shift or if your opponent wants to serum visions, they either have to take the risk of you countering it or wait and play off curve. And then Reflector Mage would be insane in the standard version of the deck if it wasn't banned, but bounce is something, doesn't let our opponent replay it, and we can do some really cool tricks with these cards with some of the other creatures in the deck that we'll talk about. Specifically, White Mane Lion is absolutely insane in this deck. So White Mane Lion is just a grizzly bear, a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, but it has flash, and when it comes into play, you return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So there's two sweet things about White Mane Lion. First, it can pick up our Spell Queller, our Reflector Mage, our Wall of Omens, our Squadron Hawk, something that generates value when it enters the battlefield. However, it does much more than that because if you read what White Main Line really says, it just says you return a creature. It doesn't say another creature. So if we get a Ketra's Monument out, we wait till our opponent's end step and we can play White Main Lion any number of times. We just play it bounce it to itself, play it again, bounce it to itself. Every time we do that for just one mana, we're also getting a 1-1 one, one token. So if we have, let's say, five or six mana, at our opponent's end step, we just make six 1-1 one, one tokens just by repeatedly bouncing our white main land. So not only does it do sweet tricks with our other creatures like Spell Quellers and Reflector Mages, but it kind of is our finisher on its own just for one mana. So many tokens, we just overwhelm our opponent, attack, and win the game. We also have a couple of other payoffs. So Skyasar is kind of strange. A five mana, 4-3 flyer, untaps our creatures when it enters the battlefield, whatever. The big deal here is the forecast ability. So for tapping two white or blue creatures, we can reveal 
Sky Hussar on our upkeep and draw a card. So once we get going and we have our bonding bit out, we're making all these tokens with our white main lion and stuff, we can just draw an extra card every turn for free. It's like a free howling mine. So sure, we might cast Sky Hussar sometimes, but most of the time, we just want to sit in our hand and draw us extra cards every single turn, again and again and again, and it plays into that plan of just overwhelming our opponent with value. Eventually, we're just going to go wider than our opponent can possibly go, Westville Abbey, the standard trick, only a one of, but make a bunch of tokens with our white main line or whatever, flip around into an Ormondal. A little riskier in modern, thanks to Path to Exile being a really solid one mana answer, but still, I mean, a red deck, they just can't deal with an Ormondal and it just wins the game. As far as the non creatures in the deck, Serum Visions help set things up in the early game, a couple of paths for removal, and then Dust Dawn, just like the standard deck, kind of a one sided wrath potentially, but the big deal here is in the late game, it just gets all of our stuff back from our graveyard to our hand let's just go again with everything that's died just rebuild our board super quickly with our monument as far as the mana bank we get a bunch of fetches a shock land some basic lands and some random blue white duels in the sideboard a couple more creatures Thalia for spell based decks storm based decks anything that's looking to win by casting a lot of spells kataki is pretty much our answer to affinity then we have gideon and dust dawn which come in in more controlling matchups so our opponent's Wrathing the board, looking to go really long. These are good, resilient threats and ways to generate card advantage to keep up in those matchups. Then we have the good white sideboard card, Stony Silence, for Tron, Affinity, Rest in Peace, any graveyard decks, Celestial Purge, good against the Death Shadow decks primarily, but any red or black permanent. And then Pithing Needle and Rune Halo give us ways to deal with things that are already on the battlefield. And that is Modern Blue White Monument, and that's our instant deck deck for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.